yeah so you should be able to relate the distance time graph and the velocity time graphs to the concept of integration differentiation and that way you will be able to figure out that okay uh, now one thing is that we will be using the symbol x for distance okay so that's the symbol that we will be using for distance now what's the relation the relation is pretty simple uh, this concept is basically kinematics and this is what you study in uh, physics as well i know some of you don't take physics yeah so the idea is that if you have distance then you can take the derivative of it with respect to time because what is distance distance is how much length something has traveled and when you take its derivative you're basically telling how does that the distance that it's moving how does that change with respect to time and that idea that how is it changing that is basically a uh, velocity right so that's what velocity is and once you have that you can use that to figure out that okay that is basically velocity so dx over dt is velocity now how does that relate uh, the graph can be of four different kinds for the distance time graph you can have a graph that is like uh, this you can have a graph that's like this you're going to have a graph that's like this or you can have a graph that is exactly at zero like over here so these four graphs and how do they relate to this i'll explain in a bit now the next thing is uh, how does velocity change so dv over dt is basically acceleration again the rate of change of velocity with respect to time is acceleration so you have distance you have velocity you have acceleration how does that relate so it's going to be x v a so let's suppose you you are given a distance time graph and the graph is like this now if they ask you to make velocity time graph for this and by the way this will help you in physics as well this is gra this graph is going to be just like this velocity time graph and if they ask you to draw its acceleration time graph it's going to be like this acceleration time graph just like remember this order whatever part they pick up the other graph will tell you the distance velocity all of that okay, so this is your acceleration let's say in another example they're like no actually this one is distance let's suppose they give you a graph in which this is displacement and displacement time graph and they're asking you for velocity time graph so velocity time graph for this one would be a straight line and the acceleration time graph for this one would be this zero so while it's good to know how to graph it without making a mistake and to really remember it what does it mean it basically means how is this thing changing its distance so if you notice whatever is on the y axis here whatever is on the y axis here that thing is changing over here the gradient is low over here the gradient is higher over here the gradient is even higher over here the gradient is even higher basically the gradient is increasing right and what's the gradient that is dy by dx so for this thing the gradient is increasing so if this is the gradient of that thing this is how it will go so this graph is basically of dy by dx if that is y this is dy by dx and this graph is basically of the second derivative of that or in other words derivative of the derivative and we know that distance velocity and acceleration are related through derivatives so d by dt of distance is velocity and d by dt of velocity is acceleration what does that mean make the relation between acceleration and distance it's the double derivative of distance or displacement which is acceleration similarly in the backward direction we know that integration is anti derivative so it is integral of this and similarly over here it is integral of this okay so this we can use as our guiding principles to solve any question that involves kinematics or these kind of things okay now just give me a minute i'm looking for a question that involves this so that will allow us to make use of this process so there's a particle traveling in a straight line passes a fixed point o on the line with the speed 0.5 meter per second so at o velocity is 0.5 meter per second the acceleration is a which is 1.4 minus 0.60 okay show that the particle comes instantaneously to rest when t is 5 so instantaneous to rest means that the velocity is zero now we do not have an equation for velocity so how do we figure that out we know the relation between displacement velocity and acceleration 
Acceleration is derivative of velocity, which means velocity is integral of acceleration. So that means if I want to find velocity, I'll simply integrate acceleration. And I know what acceleration is, it is 1.4 minus 0 0.6 t. And I'm integrating it with respect to t. Remember this, it is important to know what variable you are integrating it with. So we are integrating it with this one. So this one would become 1.4, right now t has a power of zero, so it becomes t power one divided by that power, okay? And then minus 0 0.6 times t, and t has a power one right now, you increase the power, it becomes two divided by two. And obviously plus c or plus k or whatever you want. So it becomes 1.4 t minus 0 0.3 t squared plus c is velocity, okay? And we know, that the starting value when t is zero, this thing has a speed of 0 0.5. So at t is equal to zero, the speed is, z velocity is 0 0.5. So we plug that in, 0 0.5 is equal to 1.4 times zero minus 0 0.3 times zero squared plus c, because I know the time is zero. So this whole thing goes to zero, this whole thing goes to zero. So c is equal to 0 0.5, which gives me the full equation for velocity, which is v equals 1.4 times t, minus 0.3 t squared plus 0.5. So I've found the velocity and that's exactly what I had to find out. Now at t is equal to five, what does that become? Let's see. So at t is equal to five, mm -hmm. we plug in, in here. Okay, so five squared plus 0.5. All right, so does anybody have a calculator? So this thing would become seven. This is 0.75 and this is 0.5. Sorry, uh, 7.5. So you get zero here. So V at T is equal to five is zero. So that tells me that it does actually come to rest when time is equal to five. All right, next part. Find the total distance traveled by the particle between T is equal to zero and T is equal to 10. Now I want to find distance and distance, I know the relation between velocity and distance. Velocity is derivative of distance. So distance is integral of velocity, okay. So we do that, we integrate velocity. So integral of velocity with respect to time will give me displacement, okay? And that will give me, I'll integrate this. Again, same principle, this is algebraic function. So it's pretty easy to integrate. You just have to remember how you're going to do that. You add one to the power divided by the power and, it, and the derivative of whatever is inside. Now, there's another information in the question here. They're saying between t is equal to zero and t is equal to 10. So that means your limits are from zero to 10, okay? So this time we are actually using definite integral where we have the displacement and all that, okay? So we do this, it gives me 1.4 t squared divided by two, why? Because right now power is one, add one to it divided by that, similarly, this is power two, add one to it divided by that. And right now the power is zero, so add one to it divided by that. And we don't have to put plus C or plus K or anything because we have the limit. So this is zero 10. So we just apply that. First simplify it, always simplify things first. So it gives me 0 0.7 T squared minus 0 0.1 T cubed plus 0 0.5 T, zero to 10. So you can simply apply this. now. Another useful trick that we can learn is that we have T in each one of them, right? So that means if I put zero in there, everything is going to be zero. So I don't actually need to go through that. I'll simply do this, 10 squared minus 0 0.1, 10 cubed plus 0 0.5, 10. Now I can write the lower limit zero here, but because I know that it's all going to become zero, I, I can just skip on that, okay? If you want, you can still write this. And that way you will get that this is, 70, uh, this is what, 100, I guess, and this is 50, so whatever you get, plus 20, I guess. So that is the total displacement traveled by the thing in that. Now remember, this is the total displacement, but what was the question asking us of? The question was actually asking us for total distance, all right? So that means there is something wrong here. What's happening basically is that do you notice that thing was traveling from zero to 10 and in the middle at t is equal to five, it actually stopped, right? It had a value zero for velocity. Now that means 
ट्वेंटी माइट बी द डिस्प्लेसमेंट बट ट्वेंटी इज सर्टनली नॉट द डिस्टेंस फॉर दैट विल हैव टू From zero to five, it was probably traveling in one direction. Okay, so maybe it was going like this from zero to five. At five, it turned and started going in the other direction till till t is equal to ten. So there are two parts of their journey. First, it from zero to five, and second, it from five to ten. So we should actually try to do it for zero to five first. And five to ten after that, and let's see if that makes a difference. So the distance value was given by zero point seven t squared minus zero point one t cubed plus zero point five t. Let's see zero to five, and then we do the same thing from five to ten. Okay. Now let's see does it really uh, cancel out this time? So when you apply the limits, I'm going to use a calculator for this. So this part of the journey comes out to be nineteen point eight. Now let's see how it. Goes for the second part. That is minus 11.5. Now remember that this is minus 11.5 in the opposite direction. So we will have to basically flip the sign. So it becomes minus of that. So that gives me 19.5 plus 11.5. Basically, the thing has traveled 31 meters or centimeters or whatever you have. That's the distance that it has traveled. But because the direction was changing. It flipped. So, a quick question, Karna. Of course. Because I'm still a bit like it's a bit confusing, like the last no part especially. Of course, of course, we'll do that. No problem. This one is a really old question. I don't have the most recent book right now. The particle moves so that. T seconds after passing through a fixed point, its velocity is given by this. So v is a e minus k t. We don't have a, we don't have k. All right. When t is zero, velocity is five, and when t is ten, velocity is three. Okay. So we have some some leeway. So let's apply this. When t is zero, it becomes a e power minus k times zero, and when t is Ten. This becomes three equals a e power minus k times ten. All right. From over here, we can see that this becomes a e power zero, which means it becomes five is equal to a because e power zero is one. You can plug that in there, and you'll get that three is equal to five e power minus ten k. I get three by five here. This is e power minus k times ten. Sorry. Now, if I want to find k or to make it the subject. I'll take ln on both sides. Why ln? Because I have to get rid of e. Again, you can take any other log; won't make a difference. The answer will still be the same. So you'll get minus 10k equals to ln 3 by 5. This will be a negative value. So you divide by 10. So ln 3 by 5 divided by negative 10. That's your k. Put it in a calculator, and you'll get it. so ln 0.6 divided by minus 10. That is That tells me k equals 0.0511 to three significant pairs, and it's important that you write your answers to three significant pairs. Okay, let's move on. Second part says the acceleration of the particle when t is 10. Now this one's easy because we have the velocity. Now the relation between distance, velocity, and acceleration is of derivatives. So velocity is derivative is acceleration. So if I want to find acceleration, I will have to find dv by dt. Which is what d by dt of the function. The function is 5 e power minus 0.0511 t. Because I plugged in the values from last part. If somebody got the last part wrong, and they just put some values in there, that's perfectly fine. They can just take the values that they had in the last part. So we know we want it for 10, t is equal to 10, but we can't apply it directly. We first have to find rate of change. Now that will become 5 e power minus 0.0511 t, and we know that derivative is basically div dividing it by this power. So this power's derivative is this. We divide it by that. At t is equal to 10, so now we can apply the values. So at t is equal to 10, this thing becomes so acceleration becomes 5 e power minus 0.0511 times 10 divided by minus 0.0511. 
and using you can just plug that in a calculator to get your final answer now this is more like a description question it won't be on the test but it or the exam but it helps clarify our concepts so it's saying a particle moves in a straight line with velocity this draw a sign for velocity okay uh sign diagram have to figure out where it is negative, where it is positive, how is it moving? Uh, so I know you just have to graph it. Now you can graph t squared minus 60 plus 8. So you'll notice that what are the roots for this thing? Let me just factorize this. So this becomes t squared uh, minus 2 times t minus 4 times t plus 8. That gives me t minus 2 and t minus 4. So that means my graph is basically going like this. So t is equal to two, t is equal to four. The graph is going like this, right? Now you can see that my graph is below the x-axis over here. As, as long as x is between two and four, my graph is negative because my value of y is negative. It is below the x-axis. On the left side is positive, on the right side it's positive. So we can say that the sine what signs for the graph would be basically be it will be give us a positive value here negative value in the middle and positive value here right so this is tantamount to solving the inequalities that we did in the first part of the syllabus where they ask us where it is where is y greater than equal to zero or where is y less than equal to zero so this is just like that okay b part describe what happens to a particle in the first five seconds so how is it going at t is equal to zero it has some value it keeps going down, its velocity keeps going down until t is equal to 2. So that's where the velocity is 0. Now remember one thing. What does it mean for something to have velocity 0? It means that thing is either stationary. Obviously, it is stationary. But it can also mean something else. It can also mean that that is the point where that thing is changing direction. So velocity 0 can mean two things. One, of course, the thing is stationary. But that could mean that either it's not moving at all or it is moving, but it's changing direction. Okay. And whenever things change direction, you make sure that you integrate them separately. So if I wanted to find the area of this graph, I will do it for zero to two first, then I'll do it for two to four, and then I'll do it for four and above. I'll actually break this function down into three parts because there are three parts to this graph. So remember this thing. Whenever Velocity is zero, the thing might be stationary or it can be changing direction. And if it is changing directions, then you integrate that area separately. All right, so coming back to the question, describe what happens to the particle in the first five seconds. So it's moving from a constant velocity, it started at a ve some velocity. That velocity decreased to zero, reached zero at x times equal to two, then went increasing in the opposite direction. Okay, it increased in the opposite direction until t is equal to 4, where it became 0 again, and then it starts running. So me, we can say that this thing was slowing down like this, started speeding up in this direction, then slowed down again, or started increasing again. So when it was at t is equal to 0, it was here. At t is equal to 2, it was here. At t is equal to 4, it was here, and then it started going. So this is how this thing is changing its velocity. Okay. After five seconds, how far is the particle? Okay, so we want to find distance. Again, if you want to find distance, which is x, then that is going to be integration of velocity. So if I want to find the integration from zero to five, I want to find the total distance traveled from zero to five, I will have to make sure that I do it in three steps. So there's the zero to two part, and then minus of the two to four part. Why negative? Because it's changing direction. So that part, and then plus, because it's again in the positive direction from four to five. It is very important for you to know how the graph is changing direction or where the thing is changing direction. And how do you know there's changing direction? Just find out where the velocity becomes zero. If the velocity becomes zero and the thing is moving, that means it's changing direction. And that's where you break your integral up into multiple parts. So I'll just find the integration of this thing. So integration is easy. I just have to integrate it once. So t squared minus 2t minus 4 minus 6t minus plus 8. That's what we have to integrate. So 
it becomes 3 cube over 3 minus 6 t square over 2 plus 8 times t. That's the integral, right? I'm not adding plus k, plus k or plus c because I have to apply uh, limits. So from 0 to 2, what is it doing? From 0 to 2, it's going from 2 cube over 3 minus 6 minus 0 and all that. So 0 cube over 3 minus 6 into 0 square over 2 plus 8 times 0. That is the distance traveled from 0 to 2, this part. This is the distance traveled here. Now I want to figure out the distance traveled when it was in the opposite direction. So this time, this thing again, plus 8 times t, 2 to 4. It will obviously help if you were to simplify this before you applied the limits. So now it's going to be... So you have further simplify or limit on 3 go 3 so... Oh, 3 go 3 so you can't do There is a minus sign minus there. sign. Yeah, I just... Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you do that, you will get some values. So you're getting 12. Now this is your answer from 2 to 4. And then uh, we have to do the same thing. But the limits are going to be 4 to 5. So do it for 4 to 5. You get 5.75. So your total distance is going to be the first one, which was from 0 to 2. Let me apply the limits for that. So that was 28 over 3. So this was 28 over 3. 28 over 3 plus um, 23 over 4 plus 12. This one, this one, and this one. And that is how you get your final answer of what this thing, the distance traveled by this thing. Okay, so just give it an, in a fraction. You don't have to approximate it. That's the total distance traveled. Okay, uh, this sign, negative sign, we won't need it because the distance still came out to be positive. So we didn't really need it. Okay, does that make sense? How we found distance from velocity? And is it clear yes. why we had to change signs and why we had to break the limits why couldn't we just be like okay from zero to five we couldn't do that because the thing was changing direction every time the thing changes direction the limits have to be changed and we have to break the integral okay find the total distance traveled now the c part was basically about this zero to five v dt and the d part is about this so can anybody tell me what the main difference is in these two integrals? Of course, here we are also integrating from 0 to 5, and here we are also integrating from 0 to 5. What's the difference? Sir, because like um in the like the second one, um we had to like weren't we like changing directions? Like, um, okay. Yeah, we were considering the change of direction. Yeah. So in but first, in the first one, we are not considering that. Yeah, we we're just so going in physical terms. Direction. What does that mean? In physical terms, what does that mean? So I don't get the word physical terms. Like in the real world, what would it imply? So this implies mm -hmm. this one implies displacement. Okay, like how far the thing is. So it started here. Let's suppose at t is equal to five, it's over here. So the displacement, the overall distance traveled is this. How far is it from the zero point? But this one is telling me distance. Distance. Okay. So there's a difference. If they ask us how far is the thing from its original position, as they have done in part C, they're basically asking us for displacement. When you're trying to figure out displacement, you don't care about changing directions or when it was zero and all. You just integrate the whole thing and that will give you the displacement. Because what yes. it does is, if you have traveled, let's suppose five steps in the right direction and three steps in the backward direction, you're basically two steps away from the starting point, right? So this was your starting point. You went five steps here, three steps back. So how far are you from the starting point? Just two steps. But how much distance have you traveled? How many total steps have you traveled? You have traveled eight steps. Saying that you traveled eight steps, that is distance. And saying that you basically uh, traveled two steps or you're two steps away from your starting position, that is displacement. So that's what this thing, this whole concept is, okay?